Well, hey folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another solar power generator setup video type thing. Uh, in this video, I got a new battery to test out and I'm really excited about it. So in this version, I've got a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery from Lossagy. Just off the bat, guys, honestly, I think the battery looks cool. It's, it's in a nice case. I, you know, I know it doesn't matter, but but I like the yellow and the navy blue. I think it just it's just a cool looking battery. That really doesn't matter, as we all know. Lossagy claims that this is one of the smallest 200 amp hour LiPo 4 batteries in its class. And it is definitely smaller than in a couple of the other ones that I currently have that I'm doing test on. Um, so I, I, I can confirm that. It is nine and a half inches tall, six and a half inches deep, and 19 and a half inches long. So it's a little bit smaller than all of my other 200 amp hour batteries and it weighs 46 pounds. You guys, you compare this to a lead acid battery and this is, you know, it's heavy, but it's still not bad. You know, this thing does have the, the nylon carrying handles on its side. It's easy to move around. It comes with the terminal bolts and the terminal caps that you need. It comes with a pretty decent little little manual. Um, a lot of these manuals that I get with these batteries are very rough English, I guess is the best way to put it, but there's really not a whole lot of misspellings or things that just don't make sense in this. It's not extremely detailed, I will say. Um, there's a lot of stuff that they probably could have added, but overall, the manual is nice. It gives you all the charging voltages, the parameters of discharging and charging so it's a decent little manual. It, it proves that they actually tried. Okay, so this Lossagy, it's again, 200 amp hour battery, grade A cells inside this thing. You're gonna get between two to 5,000 cycles before this thing starts to degrade. And by, by that, I mean, you can charge and discharge this thing up to 2,000 times. And then, and then once that's over, once you start to charge and discharge, you're going to start to see a little bit of degradation in these lithium iron cells, but that's true across the board for any lithium iron cell. But that's what's so great about these units compared to lead acid is you're not gonna get anywhere near that amount of, of, of cycles with a lead acid. So these things actually in the long run save you a lot of money. The energy or electricity that this thing stores uh, for 200 amp hours equates to 2,560 watt hours worth of juice that this battery station can spit out to whatever you need to power. It does have a BMS in it, a battery management system, which is pretty much standard across the board for these types of batteries in this price range. So the BMS in this thing is going to protect overcharge, deep discharge, overload, overheating, and short circuit protection. So it's basically just a brain if you don't know anything about these batteries. And I am will be the first to admit, I'm kind of one of them, but it's just a brain in, in this battery that's going to protect itself if you do something stupid to it. It does have a high temperature disconnect function. So if the internals of this battery get too hot, it's going to cut itself off so it doesn't fry itself. Well, disconnect itself at 167 degrees Fahrenheit. So when, once you get up there, guys, this thing will cut itself off and will be unusable until it cools itself back down to a safer internal operating temperature. It will continuously run equipment at 100 amps. That's that's the, the continuous rated run power for this thing. It can surge up to 280 amps at a short period of time, but then it's going to, that BMS is gonna kick in and it's gonna cut itself off. Continuously, you can run 100 amps off of this battery. So if you want to buy more of these batteries and you want to hook them up together you can connect up to 10 of these things in parallel and maintain 12 volts you can connect up to four of these things up to 48 volts if you want to wire them in series so you can connect more than one of these batteries together if you want to build a bigger system and Lossagy does offer a five-year warranty on this thing so if this battery does something that it's not supposed to do between the date that you bought it and five years from then, this battery is covered under their warrant. So with that said, guys, this 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 whole new solar setup is going to be centered around this Lossagy battery, and this is gonna be a little bit different test than my last one. I think it's gonna be a little bit more fun and a little bit more accurate because A, I'm going to have my chest freezer full with stuff, and I'm also going to hook up a 200 watt monocrystalline solar panel and put it somewhere out, out on the driveway and let it run and just see how long it'll run. If it lasts for four or five days, I'm probably gonna cut the, the test off because I'm not I don't have a permanent mounting solution for my solar panel and I don't want to keep it out in front of my house for that long because they might grow legs. But again, so I'm just going to build like another little cart because I think that that works the best for my situation and I like having it on casters again because I can roll it around. Nothing new here in terms of that. I'm going to build a cart. I'm going to put the battery on it and I've got, I'm going to use basically all of this. So I've got my eight gauge positive and negative wire. I've got my big heavy duty two gauge copper wire. This is from, from Ilee. 
It's the exact same monitor that I used on my last one, but that was from QWork. So this is the exact same battery percentage monitor with the shunt and the display to try to help me determine where my battery's at. Okay, I've got my, I'm gonna use my positive and negative bus bars as well. I've got a 250 amp inline ANL fuse, two gauge 516 whole copper lugs to use with this two gauge wire to do all the connecting. And I've also got this Bouge RV 40 watt MPPT solar charge controller that I'm excited about using. So we're gonna be giving this a shot. This will be part of the test. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uh, hooking this guy up to it to make sure it works. So stay tuned for that. So I'm using a 1500 watt inverter, pure sign inverter from Voltworks. And overall, I mean, so far this inverter seems really, really nice. And the reviews on Amazon on this thing are pretty much off the charts. Now I know that you can't always believe Amazon reviews, but this one appeared to have the highest ratings and a very large amount of reviews on this thing. So I'm excited to use this 1500 watt pure sign Voltworks inverter. Stick around, stay tuned, and I'm going to probably do a lot of time lapse on the build of this and then kind of go over everything in detail again. And then we're gonna start the test in the garage on my chest freeze. Stay kind of the, the main carcass of this unit. And I am building this a little bit different than my last one, because what fun would it be if I just did the same thing? But that battery's gonna fit in there just perfect. Got room for my lugs. And I've got the inverter placed up here because I'm hoping that having this spot, this little shelf up top is gonna give me room for all of you know the wiring and all the other little knickknacks that I'm gonna need to put on here. I am just going to kind of start the wiring of this thing and then once it's all done, I will of course show you folks a, a very up close view of, of how I wired up everything and then we will test this thing out. And I do have to get some casters for this. So that's about it for this box. So onto the wiring. Before this gets any more stuff put on it, let me kind of walk you through and show you what I've done so far. So this is going to be where my battery unit is going to sit. I've already got the positive and the negative uh, cables fish through this hole through the top of the shelf and that's just waiting for the battery. I have the positive cable, just a short little cable going up through a hole into a 250 amp inline fuse right here. This is just a simple ANL inline fuse from install gear. Then I have it coming out of the fuse and directly into a lug on my positive bus bar. Another lug from my positive bus bar is coming out and going directly into my inverter. Now, I typically don't like to have a lot of bends in my cables, but I think this is going to be fine. It's not a huge bend, and this is two-gauge cable. I think we'll be okay. My negative cable is coming up again through another hole in the shelf and going to one side of my Eile battery shunt monitor. So I've got that connected. I'm waiting on another lug. I don't have the correct lug size to, to finish routing it. I've got the actual monitor which you can't really see right now, and I'll show it to you when I'm done. I got a two and one eighth hole drilled out. I've got the monitor sitting here. I've got the cables routed up underneath and zip tied. 
and it's just simply plugged into this little battery shunt. I don't know if you can see this tiny little 22 gauge wire, but that's also connected to the battery shunt. And I have that running up to one of the small screws on the positive bus bar. And all this wire does is provide just enough power to keep that screen running on the battery monitor. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually install this Bouge RV 40 amp MPPT charge controller. So I initially thought I was gonna put it right here, but I think I'm actually gonna build a shelf to go on top because I do like to have this protected sitting in the garage. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a shelf and I'm somehow gonna mount this right around here. I don't know, but that's what's next. So next time you see this thing, hopefully this charge controller is mounted and I didn't go over this. So this is just gonna be for the charge controller. I went ahead and had this cord and a lug that I had already. So this is gonna be for the charge controller to the, to the battery side but I'll show you all that wiring when I'm done. But if you're wondering what this little wire's for, it's eventually going to run into that charge controller. I'll try to do a more in-depth and up-close view of how I did all this wiring. So you can see it's not that complicated. You just Cart. I'm pretty pumped about the way this little guy turned out. It's a very compact unit, which is kind of what I wanted. So I'm going to run you guys through up closer so you can see all the wiring up close. I kind of had to cram everything down because this thing is so small, but let me take you in for a closer look and then we'll run a few items and then we'll go from there. So I've got the Lhasa G200 amp hour battery uh, hooked up. Power from the battery is coming up and going into this inline fuse holder and that's coming out and going into a bus bar kind of like I showed earlier that bus bar is coming out and going into my inverter and then I've got this smaller 10 gauge wire coming off of that positive bus bar and that is going into a another inline fuse and that's just being routed up and into my Bouge RV solar MPP charge controller and same thing for the negative side that's just coming down and I have it routing back behind here and that is going into my negative bus bar. For the charge controller, I've got my two solar panel leads coming up through the shelf through a three quarter inch hole and going up into the charge controller. Now I'll come around back and I'll show you what I did. So I just drilled a hole and I've got my solar inputs ready up here to actually hook up my solar panels to. And as far as the inverter, this 1500 watt Voltworks inverter came with, uh, you know, your, your standard switch, I guess, because these are typically mounted in RVs and this is going to be pretty far away from the inverter, but I just mounted it up here. And then I also installed this watt meter surge protector to kind of help me monitor the watt usage. And I just have that plugged in directly to the inverter. So I can use these ports on the inverter if I want to, or I can use these ports or a combination of both but I like having this because I can actually tell the watts that are being used. Let me go ahead and cut this on real quick. So to turn it on, turn this whole thing, turn this whole unit on, just on off button on this remote. And that cuts on the inverter. So you can see right now this is showing full battery. This is showing 13.4 volts, 120 volt output, pure sign. And I've got my battery monitor here. It's not set yet because I've got to top off this battery to 100% before I set this, but it is working just fine. And to turn on this charge controller, all I'm gonna do is flip that breaker and you can see this cuts on, but this is gonna be another video, but, but, but it's running. I just don't have any solar connected to it yet. So that's pretty much the setup. I'm pretty excited the way it turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. And again, 200 amp hour, 1500 watt inverter 40 amp MPPT charge controller. And most of this wiring is four gauge, most of it. And then I've got my 10 gauge smaller wire for the charge controller, but pretty much everything else is four gauge. But I think it turned out pretty well. I like the looks of it. Um, and again, 
if you're building this for the first time, this is only my second one to build, so I'm no pro at this whatsoever, but if you're building this like on a piece of plywood board, like a two by four, like a two foot by four foot piece of plywood, it's not gonna look as complicated as this because I didn't have a whole lot of room. Don't let this scare you if you're new to this and you're watching this to figure out how to do it because once everything's kind of spread out, it's really easy to see how to build these things because again, you just connect the red to the red to the black to the black, basically. But that's pretty much it. So let me put the camera down and we'll run a few things and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's start off simple and just go with a simple little fan. So I'm just gonna plug this into the watt, watt meter surge protector. See that? that runs fine. That's showing output right at 120, 121 volts. And my watt meter is showing I am pulling 13.4 volts off of that fan. Okay, so let's try a hair dryer. Just a small compact hair dryer. See what this will give us. We'll start it off on low. And let's check out the watts. This is pulling 413 watts. Let's kick it up to high. Okay, so the hair dryer pulls over 1500 watts. It's trying, but it's not going. So let's cut that off. And I knew that it would probably be too much, but at least it shows that the system protects itself because it cuts it off immediately as soon as it gets over 1500 watts. So let's try something else. Okay, trying to find as many appliances as I can in the garage. So let's get this big floor fan, plug this in, turn the unit on and it's running fine. Turn it up all the way. Let's find something else. Okay, let's hook up this LED light. Plugging that actually directly into the inverter. There you go. And we're not pulling a lot of watts with all of these, so the fan's pulling 157 watts. The little fan's pulling 13 watts. And I don't have a monitor for this light, but this pulls around 40 watts on high, which is what it's on. So obviously nothing you know, too crazy in terms of wattage because as you saw, it tripped on the 1500 watt hairdryer. But for me, that's totally fine because this isn't going in an RV and 1500 watts max is plenty to get me through you know, an emergency or power some fans or some lights or whatever the case is but that inverter did what it was supposed to do. It cut itself off so I wouldn't fry it. So folks, that's it for this cart right here. Uh, I've got two more of these to build and these are a blast to build. Um, I wish I would have started doing these a long time ago because it's actually really fun to have to think about wire routing and making it look clean and neat. I love that stuff. The next video, I'm actually going to test this unit out. So next video, I'm actually going to use this unit and test it against my chest freezer with a Bouge RV 200 watt solar panel and see how long that thing will run. I put some extra stuff in the freezer so it's not completely empty and I'm just gonna see if it'll run it for three or four days and it should without a problem, especially with 200 watts. But that's gonna be the next video. It's an actual runtime test with this batter, with this complete setup right here. Uh, again, with a 200 watt solar panel hooked up to it. And I would test the solar panel for you folks right now, but I don't have any sun in the, in the driveway anymore, so. We're just gonna do all of that on the next video. But anyway, folks, I hope you found that entertaining, fun, and might've given you some ideas, but I'm pretty happy with this setup. So see you soon, guys. Take care.